Hello everybody, it's Granddaddy Minks cooking show time and adventure. Today, we're going to have pork shoulder. We're going to put apple juice in there, MSG caraway seed, an old bottle of applesauce. I'm going to clean that out. Just add some of the liquid to it, shake it out. I got a apple cider beer by Shorts Brewing in Elks Rapids, Michigan. That's going to go in here. I got my favorite Italian seasoning and my little shot, a shot of red wine, quarter shot of the apple cider, a dash of that black pepper, and probably about two cups of apple juice. An onion's going to go in there, and garlic clove, and a little bit of fresh mushroom right in here. We're going to cook her for about probably five hours until all that meat is going to fall off of the bone. This is a 10 pound pork shoulder. I'm gonna look for anything that's like, doesn't look right, that's rank or dark, and just don't want any part of that. I'm gonna trim that off. 10 pounds of that. Then we're gonna season this bad boy. That's, woo, that's a lot of MSG. Caraway seed. You want to cover that to the top of caraway seed. It's one of my favorite seasonings right there. Black of pepper. The garlic cloves right here. We're going to stab it and stick it in there. There we go. I cut the tops off, sliced it right off there. So that garlic can just like bleed itself right into it. I got to my onion, not the best knife for this. Save that for later for something else. We got our onion, pork shoulder. Now let's put that in that pot right there. So I'm going with the skin down right inside there. I'm going to put the apple juice in here. But that old apple sauce that's left over, make sure there's no mold in there. Come on, it's gotta be good stuff. <coughs> Whoa! Shake it up, shake it up. And it goes. Same thing with the beer. Now, Full shot glass of red wine. Quarter or a teaspoon of the apple cider. And my onions. Voila. Eh. Voila. A mushroom. In there like so. More of the caraway seed. Oh yeah, I'm coating the whole top of that. Granulated onion. Covering the top, low to medium for at least five hours. Well, at probably the most five hours. I'd say three to five hours, but me personally, it's gonna be on there for five hours, really low. Meat's gonna get nice and tender. Here we are, this is me imitating a drone. Yeah. Got the pretty flowers today. It's a beautiful day here in Florida. That's 72 degrees. Nice, cool, no humidity. Just to ripe to dry. Let's get this on the stove. We got her on the stove between low and medium. We're gonna cover this up and we're gonna look at it in about 90 minutes. And then look at it again in 90 minutes. And then look at it again at 90 minutes. And now your home is going to warm up and the aroma is going to smell. You have any guests come over, you're in a cool area, they're going to smell it as soon as they walk in the door. Stay warm. This is how I love to keep the home warm on cool days and cool nights. The aroma, 
the food, the good stuff for, for you and your friends and family. Hey, 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 let's check out the pork. Hot stuff. I know it's hot. It's hot. It's hot, 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 hot. Here, close in on that. Mm-hmm. We're gonna even slow it down just a little bit more. More towards low than it is on medium. Uh, low, just you just want a bubble, 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 a couple of bubbles, simmering it nice and slow. The meat to fall off of the bone, right? Smells good. Smells like um, the caraway seed, the red wine, and the apple beer and apple. They're 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 battling right now as far as flavors and scents goes. So far, they're overwhelming. Eventually, the onions and garlic will blend in with that too, but they're not quite there yet. Uh, it's been cooking for about 40 minutes now. We're gonna be trimming the green beans. Mmm, fresh green beans, pet green beans from Zypress Hills, Florida. We're gonna be trimming off the stems, getting comfortable. Just sitting back with you all on a nice day. Let's make it a nice day, wherever you're at. Mindy Minx, Larry Lynx is coming on over today. Jimmy's coming over for dinner. Love those kids dearly. <clears throat> Good kids. Stay out of trouble. <clears throat> they don't do anything bad. Possibility of a baby on the way excites me down the road. Really excites me. I look forward to boy or girl in the kitchen besides alongside of granddaddy mink. Partially the reason I came up with the name was thinking that uh, I'm going to be a granddad anyway so why not name this cooking adventure show that many of viewers of many minks have requested. Yeah, when I was a child, I watched a movie. My uh, adopted parents took me to see Smokey and the Bandit at a drive-in movie theater. And ever since I've seen that movie, I had a passion for excitement in the, in the road and being kind to others and doing what's right and working together with friends and family and obeying the law. So the passion of the food at the age of, I was I believe I was around seven years old, was when that movie came out with Burt Reynolds, Jerry Reed, and Sally Fields. They were paid uh, the bootleg beer in the South from Texas to Carolinas, which <coughs> in Southern United States, alcohol is still a no-no in certain counties of Alabama and Georgia, Mississippi, off the beaten path. You don't want to have alcohol in your home. You don't want to have alcohol in your vehicle. Well, you're going to have to go see the judge and see what happens. So uh, Big Enis and Little Enis for debt, they got their beer after it was trucked to them throughout the South from Texarkana, Texas, possibly Darlington, South Carolina, I believe. Awesome. I don't know the name of the track for sure that they went to. Put it in the inbox. Maybe it was the <coughs> Atlanta Motor Speedway. And then they were asked, uh, hey, can you, we let clam chowder, big enus, little enus, for debt, say they love their clam chowder. They, they'd love to know if Burt Reynolds and Jerry Reed and Sally Field would take a drive up to Boston and bring them back some clam chowder. My adopted parents got an RV when I was about 10 years old, 11 years old, and our trips were going to places and different food and different varieties of food, whether it was in the north or the south or the east or the west in the United States. The, the diversity of food in the United States 
the states. It's 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 extreme. There's so much variety here. E even look at the Harry Potter cooking style and food. I mean, that's a whole adventure in itself going to Universal Studios and trying the food over there. Uh, they have different parts of the the park are different lands. Epcot over at Disney is the same thing for food gurus. And uh, my choice is Epcot for uh, diversity in food. So that led to a, a career in trucking that I would travel and get jobs to Maine and in the summertime and bring back a bushel basket of steamer clams and two bushels of Maine lobster and uh, I had a refrigerator outdoors and I would stuff that refrigerator filled with lobsters and seaweed from head to toe. I brought them back in less than 20 hours and then I'd invite family and friends over and we would eat lobsters and seafood around the 4th of July, Independence Week, and bring back tons of seafood. And same thing with the South for uh, Louisiana, for shrimp, get your crawfish, sausage, kibasi, Old Bay, spices. And I add uh, peanuts to the equation too. Figure the peanuts are high in protein and they'd be nice to add to the boil. So you got your peanuts, your crawfish, <coughs> red potatoes, corn on the cob, Louisiana style. I'm going to soak them in water and that's going to clean them and it's also going to, the water's going to go right into the bean and fill them up even more. They're going to get a fresh drink of uh, well water. Not city water, but well water is good because there's no chemicals in it, like chlorine, whatever they do to make the water look clear. It doesn't go in soaked in our vegetables. You can use distilled water, or you can use spring water. Rinse it out. You can rinse them with that tap water, but then you really want to soak them for a couple of hours. Check it out. I have her pork shoulder. That baby is done. Look at that gravy. Mmm. Ah, smells so good. Here's her pork shoulder. Bad boy. Oh. That's nice. We're gonna let that cool down. Oh, that gravy. Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. We're gonna let that meat cool down, cool down, and then we'll pick that, trim that pork, and then we're gonna put it back in the pot. That's the apple juice, the apple cider, garlic. Wow, very porky, very porky and sweet. Oh, and, and the caraway seed really brings it off. And then all that pork is gonna go right back into the pot. And then when your guests go through it, so they're gonna have nice and juicy pork. And you can make tacos with it, you can just pork by itself on the side of the plate with any kind of fixings you want to go with it. Oh, they're gonna love it, they're gonna love it, they're gonna love it, mm -hmm. If they don't love it, well, we're gonna keep trying. A clean kitchen is a happy kitchen, and a happy kitchen is a safe kitchen. It is porky pig time. We're gonna slice that shoulder up. My gosh, am I missing my head? Off with his head. We don't like the fat. No, no, no. We like the meat. The meat is good. what we 
we've been waiting for. Juicy. Got that caraway seed going on. They gonna like it. And it is complete. Our finished product. Mm-hmm. Serve, serve, serve away. Spoon right on the plate. You got your gravy, everything. Mwah! Beautiful stuff. They're going to like it. Yes, they are. Thank you. If you enjoyed this video, Granddaddy Minks Cooking Adventure, please like, love, and subscribe as soon as you can. Notification on the right, and next time I cook for you, okay? <laughs> Thank you for watching. Have a great day.